yo, what's up and welcome, I am the one and only West Coast King and welcome back to the Sounders Career Mode where you already know the situation in the league, we are smashing it top of the league by far, tons of points ahead of everyone else, so what I want to talk about right now before we get into these games is the schedule and, and mostly the stuff regarding the US national team job. So today we're going to get through these four games in this episode with the Sounders, NYCFC, FC Dallas, Sporting KC, and the LA Galaxy. And then we get into July where it's just national team. That's all we have, but it's also a transfer window for the Sounders. So my thoughts on this are as follows. We're going to do the national team job as kind of a separate series within the series. So I won't mix in, in the same episode, US national team stuff and Sounder stuff because it's just too much stuff. And when the, the episodes doing it live commentary would get way too long. So what I'm going to do is play those four games today with the Sounders and then get all the way through probably this month of transfer window stuff and, and still play those games with the US national team but you won't see them in this episode. Instead it'll be its own separate episode and I'll probably do it as a post commentary thing so you can get through all of the, all of the international stuff, oh, this whole tournament, the South American Cup tournament in one episode. I think that's the best way to do it. Let me know what your thoughts on this are in the comments below, how you think I should do it. Obviously, if we get to like the final of it or something, I'll do a live commentary for that because that would be pretty awesome. But I, I think for just the group stage games and all the knockout stage games, I'm going to do it as a post commentary because it would take too long and too many episodes to get through it live commentary. So, those are my thoughts on that. Now, let's get on with the Sounder stuff. So, our first game of the day is going to be against NYCFC. This is on the road, and I said last time I played them when I absolutely killed them again that we're going to simulate the rest of these games against them. So that's what we're going to do. We have our full strength starting 11 in there. Everyone is fully rested, ready to go. Let's see what we can get done against them. It's a draw. Dwayne Holmes got hurt for us. Dempsey scored the goal. That's okay. On the road, a, a draw is just fine. Alright, we're going to jump right into the next game. I just looked at the teams we're playing in this episode, and they're all bad. I mean, just, I mean, FC Dallas is the bottom of the table in the Western Conference. So we're going to go ahead and simulate this game against FC Dallas. We're at home for this one. Our side is rotated. You saw the schedule. This is coming uh, just a few short days after the last one against NY NYCFC. And we get a 4 nothing victory. Dempsey and Martin's getting all the scoring done with a heavily rotated side. That was an impressive win. I did not expect us to score four times against FC Dallas in this one. Here we go right into the next game. This one's against Sporting KC. And they're somewhere near the middle of the Eastern Conference, but on the lower half. Um, just They're just not having a very good season. But, as you know, the Eastern Conference is very compact, very clustered. So they're probably only a few points off the top spot. Even though I think they're in 7th or 8th place in the East. So... Uh, we're going to go with a slightly rotated squad. Oba's actually going to sit on the bench for this one. He's available as a substitute, but he's very, very tired after playing the last two games. Um, a couple of other subs in there as well, but I think we can get this done against Sporting KC. Here's a look at Sporting KC starting 11. As you know, Ike Opara is one of the better center backs, as well as Eric Palmer Brown. Their defense is very, very solid. Dom Dwyer is also a danger man up top for them. God, I hate those bouncing fucking balls. Yes. Oh, what a swipe from Mena. Mena coming in. Plays it over to Dempsey. Dempsey takes it in. Puts it home. You cannot do that against Seattle. Are you serious? What a disaster start for Sporting KC. That was embarrassing. That's not too bad of a shot. Romain Goal hit the post! You have taken two free kicks with Goal this season. Both of them have been better than Dempsey's free kicks, and Dempsey's taken like seven. Oh, Espinosa on it. Gives it back to Dwyer. Where am I going with Suleiman? Oh no! Graham Zussi just missed an open net. That makes me question my choice for him in the national team. What was that finish? That was terrible. Oh no, 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 no. What a turn from Espinoza! What a save from Bornstein! Wow, what a save! Look at Mena get sprint back to cover this. We're so far out of position, but Mena, his best plays so far have been in defense, and he gets the ball up to Zussi. I mean, up to Zussi, up to Dempsey, who hits the post! 
Why did I say Zeusy there? It, it threw me off and I just totally rushed my shot right there. Come on, guys. Mena, I need you to be better than you were in the first half. He just takes it right by. Mena! Yes! That is what I'm talking about. That was much better than the first half. Maybe I should just not pass the ball with Mena. Look! <laughs> it's just... You know what it is. I mean, I'll show you the sliders, but I mean... That's that's the kickoff glitch. I mean, you don't have to do anything on the kickoff. If you got a guy with pace, you can literally just dribble right through. That's something EA really needs to change on this game. It's way too easy to score off of that. And you know what? I've shown you the sliders enough times that I've proven I'm not messing with them. If anything, I should probably mess with them. I know that someone suggested maybe I should mess with them and put, make it more difficult because I'm already on legendary and I'm killing teams. So maybe I should actually turn up their level of play a little bit because I'm killing them right now. There you go. Get the ball to de- Are you serious? That Carrasco guy is killing me! There you go, just take it off of- Carrasco got it again! Whoa, whoa. Okay, we got the pass- Oh my god, we can't get the ball out of our own half. We can't get the ball out of our own half, not even a little bit. There you go. Carrasco again! Who is that guy? Oh no! Oh, Bornstein got there! Who is Carrasco? He's so good in defense! Okay. That was my fault for the back pass, but did you see that first save from Bornstein? That first save, that save right there was incredible. It's unfortunate the ball came right back to him, but that save from Bornstein was sick. Servando Carrasco. Of course it's Carrasco. I might spend everything... Ah! We're gonna lose this game! It's the 88th minute, I can't do anything. No, even, now even, oh no. Oh, he missed it! Yes! I can't, I can't play anymore! They're killing us in the second half. Absolutely dominating us. Crosses in. Chad Marshall is there. What the heck was that? Come on, McAvoy, yes! Just bring it out, there you go. Final whistle. We got absolutely pounded in the second half. Pounded! We got the ball past midfield maybe once in the whole second half. Oh my god, that was so ridiculous. How did they go from being bad in the first half to being downright unbeatable in the second half? I literally couldn't do anything, not make one pass in the second half. It was ridiculous. So this right here is why we do not mess with sliders. I'm not turning it up past what Legendary already is. And I promise you I will never show you the sliders ever again. I've done it enough times to prove that I don't mess with them and I don't turn them down at all. But look at these stats. 15 shots, 9 on target, 59% possession. I've never been dominated like that, I don't think, in a game. And I still won, by the way. I've outplayed teams like that and lost, just like they just did. I've never been dominated like that before in my life. That was ridiculous. Alright, last game of the episode. Everything from here on out will be transfer window stuff. I'm going to get through the next month of transfer window business. And again, those international games will be part of a separate episode coming out at some point after this. So we have our full strength starting 11 in there against LA. It's a home game. I think we should get three points here. LA has been moving up the table as of late, so they're in pretty good form, but then again, so are we. Gaul already with a goal, and we come away with a 2-0 victory. Castillo and Romain Gaul with the goals are two wingers. Very nice performance. I like to see our wingers get on the score sheet every once in a while. Good, good stuff from the youngsters. Alright, our first season of the summer transfer window is going to be this guy right here, Hong Chul. I know I said I wanted an exemption player for the left back spot. But this guy's actually very, very good, and he doesn't take up an exemption spot. He's a free transfer. Now, I'm not sure exactly when I get the free transfers doing this with the MLS, so we're going to find out with this guy. But he's a very good player. He's going to take 30 k a week in wages, though, and that's like half of my remaining wage budget. So hopefully he's good, and hopefully I get him soon. Oh, baby! Look who it is coming in. I just finished the South American Cup playing with this man right here. He impressed the hell out of me, and now I'm going to go get him from Bayern Munich. I've been waiting a season and a half for his loan to be up. He was on loan 
at Hamburg for one and a half seasons to start this career mode off. Now he's finally free. Bayern Munich said they'd take 2.4 million for him. I offered 2.1 and Sanguini, they have accepted it. Julian Green, the future of the U.S. men's national team, is now a sounder. So I know you may be wondering where Julian Green is going to fit into this team, but I'm really thinking about the future now. I told you when I bought Castillo that I wanted to move him to striker at some point. So in the future, this is what the team could look like. Castillo up top with another striker, not necessarily Akpom. I'm not as high on him as I once was, so I'm probably going to look to replace that position at some point. Green on the right side, Zellalem in the middle with Romain Gall on the left. Captoom or some other CDM, I've got some really, really good youth system players for that spot coming up. And in the back, I'm not really sure who's going to be in the back. I mean, I'm sure Suleiman might, or could be there, Araujo could be there, but some combination of four defenders at the back. I haven't really narrowed that one down. And then we've got Josh Bornstein plugging right into that goalkeeper spot. This, the future of this team is secure now that we have Julian Green. The sky is the limit for this club. Alright guys, that is going to do it for this episode. As you can see, we're now 16 points clear of RSL, 22 points clear of Philly over there in the Eastern Conference. Pretty much our goal for the rest of the season is to not lose. I mean, there's not really a race for the Supporter Shield going on anymore. Our best, our biggest goal we could go for is to not lose anymore and go undefeated for the season. I mean, until we hit the playoffs, that's all we really got left. So, that's going to be our goal for the rest of the season is to not lose a single game. And with simulations... It could happen. I mean, I can't control what happens in those simulations. But as for the international team stuff that I recorded kind of in the background of this episode, it'll come out at some point after this one goes live. Um, I just have to find the time to edit that all together. I mean, I've been recording for four hours now in a row, so it's, it's, it's taken a long time. And because of that, I'm not sure if I'm going to continue on with the U.S. international team job. Uh, it's very, very time-consuming, and I don't know if I have the time to do it. Honestly, in real life, I don't think I have the time to do this job, uh, the Sounders career mode, the Return to Glory career mode, and then do that one because it's kind of a whole other career mode in and of itself. Maybe at some point, I will take up another career mode and just do the international team career. That would be pretty awesome. It was a lot of fun playing with that team, but like I said, it's, it's too time-consuming, and I don't think I'll be able to continue on with it. But, that is going to do it for this one. If you had as much fun as I did and are looking forward to seeing that South American Cup tournament, make sure to let me know by leaving a like below, subscribe if you're new, and I will catch you in the next episode. See ya.